What's up everyone, Jack here from Half Home. This is the Tiny Hawk Lite, and it's a really exciting entry into the FPV market. Now, this thing solves two problems that are really common when you're getting into FPV. One, it's confusing, and this solves that by giving you everything you need inside of this box. So you don't have to try and search for components, it's all there. And the other thing, FPV can be expensive and everything in this kit that you need for FPV is 160 bucks. I wanna tell you everything you need to know about this guy in less than five minutes. So first of all, Emacs is a reputable FPV company. They've been making tiny whoops. They make full-size quads. I love their stuff. They do a really nice job of developing FPV drones. And I actually started on FPV with an original Tiny Hawk. Now this is the newest, most upgraded Tiny Hawk and they've been making improvements, but they're like, you know what? As we make improvements, this gets expensive. How do we get people into the hobby? We make an affordable but capable FPV Tiny Whoop. And that's where this guy, the Tiny Hawk Lite comes into play. It's a 75 millimeter quad. It's nice and light. It's super durable. They made a gray so you can distinguish it from the white uh, FPV lineup that they've already got going. But this thing is great for a beginner and it's really easy to get in the air. I literally just charged everything up and plugged it in and was ready to go. FPV can be really confusing. You have to be able to bind your quad to your radio. This thing comes pre-bound. You don't have to do that. You gotta be able to find the signal on your goggles. It was already set. I just turned it on and it worked. And you have to be able to find the components that work with one another all in the box for you. So that is awesome. And let me tell you a little bit about these components. This is the radio. It's the Emacs E8. It does ELRS, which is the standard protocol. All the switches are labeled, which I really like. So it tells you what you're doing, what each one of these uh, flips of the switch will do for you. Uh, that's really kind of an understated touch that I think a lot of people forget about. I can even plug this thing into my computer and use it to fly in a simulator. That's a great way to learn how to fly without churning up batteries or worrying about breaking your drone. Let's talk about these goggles. These goggles are great. Uh, they're big enough uh, that if you wear glasses, you can put them over your glasses. They telescope out, so they're adjustable. But the best part is this. The screen comes off. So if you don't like flying in the goggles, you can take this off, set it on a tripod, or even mount it on the FPV controller. I think this is a great way to learn how to fly. You don't have to worry about being claustrophobic or some people get dizzy or nauseous under the goggles for the first time. This is a great way to kind of get into it slowly. It's great for a guy like me that flies drones all the time because having an extra monitor allows someone else to see what I'm seeing uh, or I can use this to set things up. This is a great tool. I love these goggles. Now they don't have a DVR, so you can't record footage. You're gonna need something else to do that. Now I did record footage because I have a DVR and I'm gonna show you some of that footage. This thing was super fun to fly around the house. That is what this is designed to do. Fly it indoors, fly it around things. These propeller guards do a nice job of protecting the drone and other things in your house. If you hold this button down here while you plug in a battery, you can up the power output so basically you can see further you can fly further uh, up to 400 milliwatts that's cool now the battery is an em 2.0 connector that is different than a lot of drones right emax is the only one that does that and they designed this connector uh, because they wanted something that was better than the options that were out there so uh, just kind of note if you're buying batteries it has to have an em 2.0 or you have to change your connector to em 2.0 now the biggest drawback to this drone is it has brushed motors. Brushed motors aren't as powerful, but they're also less expensive. That's how we can get this thing to $160. Now brushless motor is gonna be more powerful, better for flying outside in acro. This thing didn't do great outside. Sure, you can still learn acro, but there are upgradable brushed motor options. Tons of them out there on Amazon, so feel free to check that out if you wanna upgrade this thing. And the other thing that's really nice about this is you can connect it to your computer and you can change settings in Betaflight. So you can customize how this flies, how far it will angle. Uh, there are lots of different options. So you can really grow into this drone. I'm a big fan of this. I think it's a great tool for beginners. And if you're thinking about getting an FPV or you're into FPV and you want to get someone a gift, this is a great option. Is it the best drone out there? No. Is it the best FPV kit for under $200? Absolutely. Good luck finding something else with all these good components in a solid drone for that price. If you got questions, throw them down below. I'd be happy to answer them. Good luck, everyone.
happy flying.